Welcome, I'm Darren, and I'll be your guide today as I look at the first four years of Topps Finest football cards. Now this is basically the beginning of the, the ultra premium card world. It's really interesting set because there are three benchmark years for the development of cards in the 1990s. The first one being 1989, where a, a big explosion of card, a relatively big explosion of cards started to hit the market with some new interesting ideas. 1991, where the premium card brands started to really hit all over the market. And then in 1993, when the ultra premium brands broadened out the range of high-end collectibles. But there were two card sets that stood apart from this, one being 1988 Score, which was the precursor to the expansion of 1989. And it is basically a part of that group, it's just it was one year before. But the other set was Topps Finest Football in 1992. It was a card that stood completely apart from everything else, and it wasn't an official release. So it's one that you don't really think of too often. But it was kind of the shot beforehand that kind of perked everybody's ears. And I can't say whether that was the reason for all of the 1993 ultra premium card sets, but it definitely was the, the opening salvo. So for 1992, Topps created a set of cards that they weren't like any other cards. Now true, in 1992, you also had Playoff, which was a really thick card with a chrome finish, and you also had Collector's Edge, which was making plastic cards. So there was some interesting stuff going on, but the card stock that was used by Topps for their finest cards had an interesting chrome finish that wasn't like what Playoff had used. This was a, a heavily lacquered surface. And so there was almost like a, it was almost metallic in a way. And the reflective qualities inside for how this, how, how the detailing came through really looked impressive. And the card didn't feel like plastic, but it sure didn't feel like cardboard. So it was, it was this really interesting card that was extremely high quality and high quality beyond anything else that anybody had done. Now Topps needed to do this because they were very much behind the game. Even by 1992's main set releases, they just weren't able to create cards at the level of everybody else. So they needed to be able to make a big jump forward and this was really the one that they did. The set itself is 40, 45 cards, it's veterans and some rookies, and it also has a checklist which is a title card. It came as a complete set, so this is really a test set, that's really what it is and it, it falls kind of out of the category of what we usually collect as a result of that, but it is an official set. They did it only in football, and then in 1993 when they started to do cards in packs for baseball and then for basketball, they, they basically didn't bother with football, which is really kind of interesting. So this started with football, but people don't think of it that way because baseball was the first place where most people saw Topps Finest. And unlike what you would see later down the road, this test set did not have refractors. But it really didn't need to have refractors because this set, deep under that lacquer, there's some detailing in the, in the surface that provides the, uh, the ability for light to kind of glint off for some of the cards, but the checklist is really impressive because that whole football is just a modeled etched texture that is, is really alive and, and really exciting. So, in 1994, when they finally went ahead and launched their first football set in packs, these cards have some similarities to the previous set. It has, instead of a black border, it has kind of a light blue border, which isn't all that impressive, but you know, it, it, it is what it is. And then it has a border detail inside the card, part of the theme, that is kind of a, a metal appearance. That's, that's the idea. And then they have kind of a rainbow pattern on the, on the detailing around in there with a portrait picture of the player in the middle. And that's basically the card design that they went with. On the card back, it's very white, and unlike the 1992 set, which was literally just a test set where the card back was basically saying, top's finest, here they actually built a whole card back, which isn't too bad, but it's not all that intriguing. These cards did, however, come with a refractor version. Now, the refractor version is not differentiated in any way on the card back. On the card front, the only way you can tell is because instead of having the sort of chrome-like finish, they actually have a a rainbow hue that, that you can see as you move the card around. And this is a very common thing. If you're familiar with Finest, you're very familiar with what a refractor is, but this was the first place they put this and they did not put the protectors on these cards. So for 1994, just like with 1992, they didn't bother with protectors. They didn't really see the need. 
But they also did rookie cards in here that are not actually rookies. They're called rookie stars. So it, the way to think of this set is it's not really the 1994 set as much as it's a really, really, really late 1993 set. And so the rookies in this set, as they're flagged, are really the 93 rookies. So these are not their rookie cards, but they're flagged like rookies. They're presented like rookies. They're just it's a little bit too late for that. But they also did jumbo cards, and these came one per box, and this was the rookie stars cards. So in these, in these boxes, there was a box topper that was a four and a quarter by six inch card. It's exactly the same as the cards in the set. The numbers are the same. Everything about it is the same. It's just, it's really big. And that's, that's basically the only thing they did extra for the set. So you have the basic set and it has some rookie stars in it, which is basically a subset, which is intermixed throughout. And then you have the jumbo cards, which are just box toppers. And then the only other thing of note to talk about in 1994 was the fact that unfortunately, the way that they finished these cards, the whether it's the ink or what is what in it is not really stable, these cards have a tend to, have a tendency to deteriorate. Now you've probably already seen that on this card where the ink right around the face, it's usually around the face and light colors in the in the jerseys, they have a tendency to kind of wear away and wash out and then you'll see like a rim of the original color around the outside it's not that some of these cards are damaged most of these cards are damaged it's very very difficult for these cards to actually hold up over the years so it's an annoying thing and it's you know good luck if you're trying to get the high quality cards because they're pretty tough to come by but that is a very big problem in 1994. so in 1995 the cards were improved a lot. First off, there's not as much wearing away of the colors. The, the colors tend to hold up a lot better in 1995. The border was less, less structured and rigid. Here they basically did like a, a, a lightning storm around behind the player. It gets a little bit too busy. It's not bad, it's just not really great. They hadn't quite figured out how to make these cards look great like they had in 1992. They were all about the fun, they were all about the refractors, and they were all about being really high-end. That was the, the thing about these cards. And so for 1995, they got more into the fun of it with all these, these lightning bolts. And on the card back, the card back looks a lot better. They, they actually got into some colors instead of just being a washed out white card. It looks better. And these cards again have the refractors. And again, in series one, they do not differentiate the refractors. They don't have anything on the back to, to specify that. But here in 1995, they started to use the protectors. They started to put them on the top, and I assumed that that was because they really wanted to lean in for the investors and make it clear for investors that these were high-end cards. These were high-quality cards. Now, there's always a debate that goes on in card collecting regarding do you peel these off or not. For most of us who are really serious about card collecting, we like to leave it on and keep the card intact. If you don't have to take it off, why would you take it off? Admittedly, if you take the peel off, the card looks really nice, but then it's a changed card. And that's that's kind of the thing about this debate is, do you want the card to look the way the manufacturer wanted it to look, or do you want it to look the way that it originally was, the way that it came out of the pack and completely intact so that you can it can change in whatever way you want? Because once you take the peel off, it's gone. I happen to be on the leave it on, leave it in the original in the original condition. I happen to be in that camp, but it, it is a debate that goes on quite a bit. And this is where it started in 1995. And again, they did the rookies that were not really rookies. They didn't even call them rookie stars. Here they just called them rookies, but these are the 94 rookies that are appearing in the 95 set. But this is for series one. And they actually did a second series, a series two. And in the series two, they actually did put rookies in. Now the card design is a little bit different, but they again say rookies. So understand that the series two cards that say rookies are rookies. The series one cards that say rookies are not. And in series two, they actually did start to put a little R down on the bottom of the back of the card to differentiate refractors. So thank goodness for that. But there's another version of these cards that exist that were released in regular Topps packs as promos. And these are called the Topps Finest Boosters. This is 22 cards and it picks up at the end of the series one numbers, starting with 166 and then it goes 22 numbers beyond that. And these are players that appeared in the, in the first series, but the card numbers are different and the images are different for the players. So there, there's no confusion between the boosters and the regular cards, especially because on the back where the card number is, it literally says booster and then the card number. Now, when Series 2 came out, these same 22 numbers were used in Series 2, so the numbers cross over. So if you're trying to do something cutesy where you have Series 1 and then you have the boosters and then you have Series 2, the numbers don't line up. 
but those cards do appear. They're technically part of the top set, but they are promos, and again, they have the, the repeated numbers. They also come with the refractors, and again, they also come with the, with the peel on them. Other than that, for the, the main set, they, they didn't do anything. That's basically the whole run of it, Series 1 and Series 2. And then they did do jumbos again, and in this case, it was done at one of the card shows. So these were done as 22 card sets, and they are done in the same way as the regular insert cards. In fact, the numbers on the card backs are on there too. So just like the box toppers in 1994, the 1995 are jumbos of the regular cards. These are a little bit smaller than the previous year. These are four inches by five and five eighths inches. So they're, they're slightly smaller, but they, they are otherwise the same. They don't have the, the protective peel over the cover. So this was done at a card show where Topps was actually giving them out. So they didn't need to have the protective coating on them. They also come with the refractors, but like I said, the numbers are the same ones from the set, but lower down on the card, they have the number out of 22 on there as well. So they actually have two numbers on the card backs. And we go with the numbered out of 22 card number when we're cataloging them in order to keep track of them because skip number cards really don't work too well. They also did an insert set, and these are thin acetate cards. They're, they're kind of like plastic and they're see-through cards. So this is called Fan Favorites, and these are a bunch of veteran players. And the when you look at the front, it has one image on it. And like I said, see-through. If you turn it over, it has, it has little information down at the bottom. And the card number appears on the bottom. But if you turn the card just right, the whole back turns into this kind of rainbow refractor effect. But it's not really a refractor. It's a, a fixed pattern of colors. But it has that rainbow color. It has that rainbow quality of oil on water track on the back. So on the back, it's almost like they have two phases. And it's impressive when you turn it, you get just the light and it just completely takes over the whole card back. On the card front, you can kind of see it, but on the card back, you really see it. But they are very thin. They're solid, but they're very thin. And then they did another set of cards that were direct ordered from Tops. This is their finest landmark set. And these cards, they came in two series and they are bronze. They actually are made of bronze. And on the front, they have an inset of enamel set inside that looks like a finest card. It's really, really nice looking. And if you turn it over to the back, the whole back is the bronze with relief for all of the text that goes along with it. But these are extremely heavy cards because they're, they're really thick cards. So that was the only other thing they did for 1995. And then leading into 1996, they decided to make a pretty significant change because what they had, they, what they'd been doing, they'd been getting away with, but the whole industry was changing in a hurry and they had to make these cards more interesting for collectors. They couldn't just say, these are the high end cards. They had to really get people inspired to collect cards. And so what they created for 1996 was a very, very interesting idea that was too chaotic. They could only do this for one year. They would not have been able to pull this off for a second year. So in 1997, they basically fixed some of the problems, some of the problems that they had from 96. But for 96, what they did was to create a three-tier card set where, with five different themes. So every single card came with either a bronze border, a silver border, or a gold border. And this entire set is done in a, in a way so that all of the cards are, are scattered all around. The bronze cards, silver cards, and gold cards, they're all showing up in different places, and they come in one of five different themes. And so you have the bronze set, and it has five themes, and in the silver set, it has the same five themes, and in the gold set, it has the same five themes. And of course, every single card comes with the peel, and they also come with refractor versions. So the five card themes are Sterling, which is a bunch of veterans, that, well, not veterans, they actually have some rookies, but these are the high level players. And then they have playmakers, which as you can imagine, these are a bunch of different playmakers. They also have destroyers and those are defensive players. And then they have futures and futures are young players who are coming up. So it's basically like the, the previous year's rookies is kind of the, the way that the theme went. And then they have their, their freshmen and freshmen is the rookie cards themselves. And these cards are, th there aren't a lot of freshman cards. The futures are also pretty, pretty rare in comparison to the rest. But those five themes are, like I said, repeated in each different category. So as you're putting together the set, if you're doing it by numbers, everything's just all over the place. If you do line it up so that you have all the bronze and then all the silver and then all the gold, you still have to figure out, do you have everything scattered? But at that point, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So you may as well do it by themes. But then the teams are all kind of mixed up. It's really tough to make this, this whole set look right in binders. 
but it is kind of fun to, to work with developing it. But personally, I waited until I actually had the entire set before I reordered it, just so that I knew where all the different themes showed up, all the cards, all the players. So it is a really chaotic affair. And on the card back, they do have two numbers. They have one number, which is the card set number, and then they have another one, which is based upon the theme. And again, the set came as two series, and they actually had checklists in each one of the two series that were, that were different. So in series one, the checklist is actually one of the gold cards, so it's kind of a rare card. In series two, the checklist is a bronze card. I don't know why they, they made the checklist gold that, to, to make it one of the more challenging cards to get in series one, but you know, they, they did do that, which is a really interesting idea. And then all of the cards within each one of the three tiers is all the same rarity. So they don't have different levels of rarity between the different themes in each of the different tiers of cards. So all the bronze cards are just as difficult, all the silver cards are just as difficult, all the gold cards are just as difficult. And they use the tiers, the, rel the challenge of getting the cards in the tiers, and of course the refractors corresponding to that, as the interest in the set. So they did not do inserts. But there are two jumbo cards that were done. The first one is done just like the previous year. It's 22 cards. These were done at one of the card shows. And these are four inches by five and five eighths inches. So that's the, those are the dimensions. And these are just the same as the cards in the set, except the numbers are not repeated on these cards. They took the numbers out, the whole number box. They, were, they evacuated that and put in just the number of 22 number in there. Otherwise, the card is the same except these cards are all gold. So it doesn't matter if it's actually a bronze card theme, the design, the, the original card design, or if it's a silver card, they all came out as gold cards with in the finish. And they come with the regular and they come with a refractor and these also do not have the peel offs. And then they did another one that's actually a five by seven. It's a little bit bigger. There are only six cards in this set. But again, these are repeats of cards from the main set. They, they did not repeat the number. And in this case, just like previously, if the card was a silver or bronze, doesn't matter. In this case, it comes out as a gold. So those are basically the, the last things they did for 19, 1996. It was a really stripped down year. And for 1997, they would, they would again, basically do a, a basic set with the different tiers and the different themes. But the way that they approached the set was starting to get a lot more complex. It was a lot more interesting. There's a lot more to discuss. And it was kind of a lead into 1998. So I'm going to look at those separately. For this, I just wanted to look at the, the very beginning of Finest, literally the beginning of Finest, all the way through the, the chaotic mess of 1996 before they had to retool and start to, to take the cards as, to approach them as a, a continuous set. And so I hope that in this video you've learned something. I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, definitely subscribe if you haven't done so already. Look out for other videos that I've done and look for the, the upcoming finest videos that I'm going to do. And uh, thank you very much for watching.